Hey friends, Michael here. Welcome to Coffee on Campus, where each week we unpack um, the passage from Sunday's sermon and just uh, begin to try and understand it, dissect it, and talk about how we can practice what we're learning in Christian community together. So uh, grab a cup of coffee, hope you'll join in on the conversation and um, share your thoughts as well. So today we are in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and uh, let's just go ahead and jump in and read through the passage together. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 1 through 11. I'm reading from the NLT translation. When one of you has a dispute with another believer, how dare you file a lawsuit and ask a secular court to decide the matter instead of taking it to other believers? Don't you realize that someday we believers will judge the world? And since you are going to judge the world, can't you decide even these little things among yourselves? Don't you realize that we will judge angels? So you should surely be able to resolve ordinary disputes in this life. If you have legal disputes about such matters, why go to outside judges who are not respected by the church? I'm saying this to shame you. Isn't there anyone in all the church who is wise enough to decide these issues? But instead, one believer sues another right in front of unbelievers. Even to have such lawsuits with one another is a defeat for you. Why not just accept the injustice and leave it at that? Why not let yourselves be cheated? Instead, you yourselves are the ones who do wrong and cheat even your fellow believers. Don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't fool yourselves. Those who indulge in sexual sin or who worship idols or commit adultery or are male prostitutes or practice homosexuality or are thieves or greedy people or drunkards or are abusive or cheat people, None of these will inherit the kingdom of God. Some of you were once like that, but you were cleansed. You were made holy. You were made right with God by calling on the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. All right. Well, um, yeah, heavy text. Um, There's a lot going on there. And um, yeah, I don't know. As we just read through that, what jumps out of you right away? Hey, first of all, thanks for having me back, man. <laughs> I didn't ruin it the last time, so you invited me back to talk about it again. So <laughs> thank you for that. Yep. Um, you know, what jumped out at me, honestly, was that I've never taught on this passage before. <laughs> nice. It's like, you know, I've read it, but personally, I've just kind of like skimmed over it. It just didn't seem applicable. I don't know what it is, but I think that's been the benefit of hmm. preaching through the entire passage is we're forced right. to deal with passages that... Typically, I don't deal with, to be honest. Right. And so what jumped out at me was, is actually how relevant the passage is, huh. even though it didn't seem to going right. to be relevant. Like, we're not going around, you know, I don't know a lot of people suing each other in the church and all that kind of stuff, but right. the relevance of that passage is actually pretty strong after I really dug into it, so. No, that's a really good point. Um, yeah, I feel you on that. It's so easy to jump to the texts that we're very familiar with, the ones that are kind of comfortable and cozy. Um, And that's obviously not like an (laughs) indictment. I mean, like those passages are meaningful, you know, like I like reading Romans 8 a lot, you know, it makes me feel great, makes me feel excited. Right. But there is something about going through sections and going through a whole book that makes you like examine all those little things. Yeah. Um, Yep. And yeah, um, what so you said just how relevant it was. Yeah, I think the other thing that jumped out was, you know, Paul's, um, I don't know the right word, frustration or mm. his godly anger. Like, right. I don't know the depth of it, but he's he's kind of frustrated with, with the church, actually. Right. Uh, we, sometimes we think that you know, the Bible's frustrated with sinners and those outside of the church, hmm. but it actually flipped the script. And the last chapter in this chapter, he's actually frustrated with how the church is acting. 
and what's happening inside the walls, not necessarily what's happening out in culture, right. is actually upset with how Christians are behaving. Hmm. And so that passage really jumped out at me. And, and I think the, the little sarcasm that jumped out at me was when Paul, like, you know, the first few chapters, uh, one of their issues was that they felt like they were really smart, they were brilliant, right. they had all this worldly wisdom, they were intellectual, Corinth right. was known for all that, yep. especially with Athens nearby. And when he, when he says about that fact of, of um, handling these disputes within, within the church, you know, within that set, he says, isn't there anybody smart enough to take care of it? <laughs> I love that. You know, like, yes. like you guys are talking about how brilliant you guys are and all this wisdom you have and all this kind of stuff. Isn't there anybody that actually has enough to take care of it within the church? Why do you got to go outside the church? And I think he's kind of like poking at him. So. I agree. I think that's, um, man, I think that's one of my favorite things in this passage. And um, I love it when like, it's so easy, I feel like, to read the Bible with this like seriousness and kind of always have this assumption of like, you know, when I read the Bible, I need to be like, serene right. and like serious and right. everything is like this deep lesson but like there are bits that are just like really sarcastic and aggressive and mm -hmm. um i agree i think it's it's a little bit he is mocking them it's like tongue-in-cheek like right. it's it's kind of hilarious isn't there anyone wise enough to decide these issues or um yeah but i think it um it makes it i mean he makes his point that um yeah, they're being um, kind of ridiculous. Yeah, um, and how they're so. I guess as we're looking at that, you know, what what stood out to you? Because obviously, like, you know, like you said, when I read this, um, you know, I'm not currently suing anybody. Um, I don't think I've had any major legal right. disputes. But what what is it about? What is it? What's the principle that Paul is addressing yeah. that hits home for the church? Because I yeah. it does seem like. It is really relevant to right. the church yeah. and even today. You know what I what I took away from it is is how we handle our disagreements, mm -hmm. how we handle our disputes, how we handle our various opinions, uh, even in the things that have we feel wronged in, mm -hmm. even where um, an injustice maybe has happened to us. And um, you know, Sunday I told the story of how. You know, I have felt the sting of injustice before, and, and and it's never trivial when it's our own injustice. Right. Like, you know, it's easy for me to say, you shouldn't feel that way, and you should just be like Jesus, and all that kind of stuff. But when it happens to me, right. it, it always feels significant. Right. And so, um, and all of us have had those experiences where we feel wrong, we feel cheated, we feel right. betrayed, we feel hurt, we feel used, or whatever it is. Right. And how we choose to respond to that as the church, as a church family, I think actually makes a difference in our witness uh, to the community. And, uh, you know, so I think that's kind of the takeaway for me is, is how we deal with the hurts, how we deal with the frustrations, how we deal with all of those things inside of the church. Do we do it like everybody else? Right where we put it out there to the non-believing world to get people right. to sympathize with us on Facebook or, you know, or whatever. Right. Or do we actually follow Jesus principle in Matthew 18, where right. we try to address it and deal with it and try to resolve it. So, right. Cause I, there's almost a sense in which, um, we hope everybody can hear this. Uh, yeah, they are sawing right outside the door right now. <laughs> there's a lot going on out there. So. I feel confident that the audio is going to come through, but right. if you're hearing some horrible noises, um, Yes, the There's, building's in the middle of a renovation. We are in renovation happening. right now, so <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, so hopefully this all comes through. Yep. Um, but yeah, there it it is almost like there's a sense in which um, the culture of their time make creates this freedom to do things that Paul's right. saying we shouldn't do, yep. and so they it's almost as though they feel like oh well like. This is normal. This is what people do when they have a grievance. This is what, and Paul is trying to tell them, like, that's what the world does, yeah. but that is not how Jesus has illustrated for us to live. That is not how, you know, Christians are supposed to yeah. live, yeah. Um, which is uh, really, I mean, I, that's challenging, yeah. you know, for sure. Yeah. 
And I think he really points that out in the last part of that passage where he mm. says, you know, there are all these, um, all these sins, all these things that, you know, that are part of the, uh, part of our sinful nature, part of our mm. lust and, you know, all this kind of stuff, whether it's material lust, sexual lust, all this kind of stuff, he, he, you know, he mentioned, but then he says, and some of you were like that, right. but now you've been cleansed. Right. Like you've been made holy, you've been made right with God, and he's trying to get him mm. say, you know, like, yeah, that that's that's normal outside of the walls, right? Like that stuff is there, and you were once part of that, right? But you accepted Christ, you right. chose to follow Him, mm. and He made you right, He made you holy, He cleansed you, and it's right. almost like start living that way right. instead of going back to that way. And I feel like that even what you just said, I think really brings it home, especially because I think that even hits the like, you know, the phrase that also sticks out to me in this passage is he says, why not just accept the injustice? Oh, wow. You know, that's kind and of that hits me heart. where it's like, he's like, but you were cleansed. You were made holy. So like, why not just accept the wrongdoing? Why not just, you know, yeah. I feel like that's, almost this underlying theme mm -hmm. of he's saying, you know, that because, you know, you've received that grace in Christ and mm -hmm. we have a different kingdom, you know, mm -hmm. that we're a part of. So like, how can you continue going like this when that's what Jesus did for you? Yeah. Um, and that's a prominent thing, like, especially in our culture, like demanding our rights. Yeah. Um, it's all about what, what is good for me and right. right for me. And if you, so that's, so I think we handle our, our disputes that way. Like you've wronged me or I have I feel, a right. I have a like, right. I have a right to bring this up. Exactly. I have a right to be angry with yeah. you about this. Yeah. I have a right to demand mm -hmm. you to apologize on my terms, on my. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And if you talk about it outside of a deep understanding of faith, everybody would agree with you. Right. It all makes sense. It all makes sense. And yet Jesus has this countercultural way to live. Right. And Paul, really, I think you nailed it. And Paul says, why can't you just accept that you've been cheated? <laughs> <laughs> like, why can't you just accept betrayal and hurt mm -hmm. and injustice? You know, and, and that really reminds me of Jesus because... Right. If anybody had the right to like obliterate everybody, like when they put them on the cross, like right. that's the last stand. Like I'm not taking this anymore. Right. Boom, wipe you guys out. Right. And yet he accepted that injustice. Mm -hmm. He took his sin upon himself for a greater good, right. for a greater purpose. And I think if we can do that, see the bigger purpose and the greater right. good of preserving the unity uh, of the body right. and the relationship versus. Uh, having my needs satisfied, um, I think some good things can happen there. So. Yeah. And even just like, it's almost like God, you know, he's revealing God's own character. Mm -hmm. Almost like God knows that when we demand our own justice on our own terms, there's like something, the power of redemption is in the allowance and the love that is unconditionally returned. You know, it's... Um, yeah, I feel like it's almost like God knows how love really works, you know, right. and he's right. illustrating for us um, how He definitely he does. does. He is love, right? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, yeah, any other just kind of closing thoughts maybe on just, you know, what that looks like for us? You know, how do we live that out? Yeah. Um, what do we practice differently to yeah. try to do this? I think it's really important that we go back to Matthew 18. Um, Jesus left some very solid principles. So if we take those ideas of when we feel wrong, when we feel like we've seen injustice and all that kind of stuff, right. you know, he talks about just the willingness to go to that person. Don't go to other people, go to that person, see if there can be something resolved. Right. If that doesn't happen, then maybe bring a few other people, people you trust, somebody maybe arbitrate that, help, right. just help to resolve that. And there's a point where it escalates, Right. But oftentimes it doesn't have to escalate if we actually just deal with them head on right. uh, with the grace and be willing to accept right. the injustice. And sometimes there's forgiveness and sometimes I need to let things go. That's powerful because I think there's a truth there of like being willing to confront the issue, but also being willing to forgive despite like just knowing you were wrong it was wrong 
it was painful, but you forgive anyway. And they may not concede that. They may not even accept it. They may not apologize. They exactly. may not be sorry exactly. or make you know the appropriate response. Right. And you still forgive anyway. Right. Um, and I think that's the principle of accepting maybe the injustice. Right. You know, and I and I think it's that principle. So we deal with it, right. but it doesn't have to go our way. <laughs> hmm. You know, so we still try to follow Jesus, you know, teaching on that. Right. But when it comes down to it, we're going to choose to preserve the relationship. Right. We're going to choose to seek unity right. so that the world that's watching will see that there's something different about how we behave and how we act. Right. That's super good. Um, yeah, I know I'm taking that with me. Um, and I know, I mean, that's, it's hard to practice because, um, I mean, it's hard to live that. And I feel like even lately in my life, I've been realizing how much giving that kind of love really only comes from God, Mm -hmm. you know, and that I can't always forgive people that way without the spirit working in me. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm faced in that situation where like, I feel this weight of like, I know that I've been wronged and I need to forgive them anyway, even if it doesn't go my way at all. And um, that I need to accept on any terms and choose to love anyways, that in order for that to happen, like I feel the gap, you know, of like, I'm here and I know this is what needs to happen, but I can't close it. And actually, rather than trying to like leap over the gap, I need to like retreat into Christ mm-hmm. and receive his love. Um, that's the only way I can give it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree wholeheartedly. And I think that's why he talks about, you know, that we, we once were this way, but we're now a different way. And it's really because of the Lord Jesus and his spirit. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's kind of been a sub theme that he's talked about this living out this sinful desire, this right. flesh, Or are we going to be controlled by the spirit? Mm. And in those times we have a choice. Do I lean into my self? Right. Or do I retreat and lean on the spirit within me? Mm. And each time I do that, it reinforces one or the other. Right. And the more that I can choose to allow the spirit to lead and guide. Right. The better, you know, the better things move in the direction that God wants them to move. Now, the truth is, none of us are going to be perfect in that, right? Right, right. And so, there's still grace in the process. Absolutely. Yep. And we shouldn't feel the shame of not getting it right all the time. Right. But we need to keep surrendering that to God yep. and own up to that and let Him heal that. And yes. um, and then next time, maybe we do better. Right. You know, so. And then continue to uh, be stripped and open and let God work in us in a new way. Right. And, and try to create space for the Spirit to work. Right. Yep. Um, yep. Man, yeah, I, I know that's sitting with me. I hope that this is helpful with you guys. Um, I feel like that's a landing spot um, of what I'm going to take home. So I hope it is for you guys as well. Um, Mark, do you want to just close us sure. in prayer and Love just kind of bring this together? Yeah, yep, let's pray. <clears throat> God, I, um, I, thank you for, I thank you for your word. I thank you that you didn't leave us to try to guess and figure out Uh, what you're thinking and how we should live and how the church should function, that we really do have some really solid principles. We have uh, real clarity uh, about um, how to live and how to function. And so, Lord, when it comes to this idea of handling disputes and conflict and hurt feelings and injustice and all of these things, Father, I pray that you help us to to seek unity, to seek restoration, to seek the relationship. Father, to practice the principles that you've given to us, but also to um, to be able to release the hurt, to be able to accept some injustice, to um, you know, to not always have to fight for being right or to have our rights justified, and. Um, And I thank you that the more we do that, the more we look more like your son, Jesus. And so, Spirit, I pray that you would move within us, that we would allow you to do your work that only you can do. We're not going to be able to do this by willpower or anything. We just, it's by surrendering to you, Holy Spirit. So we pray that you would continue to 
lead us and guide us and convict us and help us to surrender to you because you, um, you have our best interest. You want us to be uh, conformed to the image of your son. You want us to look more like Jesus and that uh, you're willing to do that work in us if we allow you. So uh, help all of us that are watching and listening to um, be in agreement with you and allow you to do that work. And uh, we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for being on here, Mark. Awesome. Always appreciate your wisdom. So right. Next time you're buying my coffee, though. <laughs> okay. Fair all right. enough. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us. And uh, we'll see you next week.